So, I have a huge problem going on with my mother-in-law. At the same time, my sister's wedding's coming up. I'm going to have to back out of my sister's wedding so I can look after my mother-in-law, who is having a really, really hard time in the hospital. Well, I thought my sister would understand, but obviously she doesn't, and she's coming at me like this. You're right, the title might sound bad. In fact, really bad. Who would think of backing out of their own sister's wedding? What could be so urgent that I just had to skip it? Did I really choose my fiancé over my own sister? I know you may have all these questions, but please bear with me, because I feel that you would really see my perspective if I gave you some context. So let's rewind to about a week ago. Just a week. That was how long it was until my sister's wedding, and all of us were so darn excited Think of the blooming flowers, the elegant dresses, the lovely cake, all that jazz. And all that loved ones that would come together. Mom, Dad, Nana. And in fact, our family would expand. Imagine all those new relatives from my sister's husband's side. It was all just too exhilarating. I simply could not wait, and personally, I was like a child in a playground. Running around in excitement... Whether it was to the tailors to pick out a dress and oh how difficult it is to find the right shade, or the nearest department store to pick out gifts. Um, perfume, makeup, clothes, <laughs> you name it. Would it be enough? No. It all had to be special. It was my sister's wedding after all. I found myself lounging on the couch browsing through Pinterest in search of ideas. I was a hunter scouring for prey in the jungle of wedding post, full of trees ripe with inspiration for a marriage ceremony. Minutes and minutes passed and my eyes were hypnotized by the vast number of images that fleeted by, only to be unsuccessful in finding something that was just right. I was like Goldilocks. Soon I snapped out of this trance and had some risen from the comfort of the sofa after hearing a key entering a lock. My fiancé was home. As I walked towards the front door, a lofty man wearing an emerald sweater over his milky white shirt entered, a black bag slung over his broad shoulders. Oh, how much I loved my fiancé. I looked into his usually cheery, handsome eyes that were blue like the sky, only to realize that they seemed rather cloudy and almost lost as if he was in a state of terror and petrification. His chestnut brown hair was also disheveled, and his breathing was shallow as if he had just done a 5k marathon. Hey, what's up? I asked the smile with the face that I had on when I saw him slowly turn to a frown. What happened? I was beginning to worry a little something wasn't right. Oh, Julia. He began through his huffs and puffs trying to catch his breath as if he were fishing for it from the depths of the ocean. Julia, we need to go to the hospital. That really caused me to panic. He barely used my full name, uh, ever, and almost as if he were a reflex of the words poured out of my mouth. What happened, John? Tell me, what's going on? But before he could say another word, I quickly brought him inside and sat him down where I had been sitting previously, letting him slowly catch his breath until he could formulate sentences. Jules. Jules, my mother's in the hospital. We need to go and see her now. Oh my goodness, that's awful. Let's go right now. I'll, I'll be back in no time. And with that, I hastily sped upstairs to the bedroom, ravaging through the wardrobe for any pair of jeans and a t-shirt to go with it. Once I was dressed, I took a quick look at myself in the mirror, my forest green eyes judging whether the denim blue jeans and red-white striped t-shirt were appropriate apparel for a hospital trip that could last for hours. Who knows what the waiting time could be like? Before I went back downstairs, I snatched a scrunchie from my nightstand and tied my dark brown hair into a ponytail and grabbed a thin jacket to keep myself a little warm in case it got a little chilly. Hospital waiting rooms did sometimes get a tad bit cold, or sometimes, when you spend hours inside the hospital and leave in the middle of the night, you get hit by that evening chill. 
Hey, I'll drive. I said as I grabbed the keys, and soon my partner and I were in the car, exiting the driveway and headed straight towards the hospital. During the drive, I looked out the corner of my eye to see my fiancé fidgeting, his restlessness making the aura of tension and concern emanting from him explicit. John, I know you're worried, and I am also, but we'll be there in just a few minutes, and hopefully it'll all be good. We can all go home after together and then go to my sister's wedding. Just hang in there, honey. And with that, I put my hands on his, filling it slowly, feel a little less painful in my palm. As we pulled up to the hospital, my fiancé's panic starts to return, and as soon as I had parked the car, he had already unlocked the door, pulling out his phone and making calls trying to collect as much information as possible. His hands were shaking as he struggled to keep the mobile in his grip, and he trembled all over. Once I had exited the car and he finished the phone call, he turned to me and informed us that we needed to go over there. And off we went, entering the busy, bustling hospital. My fiancé rushed to the front desk, sharing all the details and collecting all the information he needed, before returning to me and taking me through some corridors while the nurse led the way. In all honesty, there was something about hospitals that gave me the heebie-jeebies. It was probably the dim tube lights that illuminate the halls and the multitude of doors along the corridors, with God knows what kind of suffering people were facing behind them, from terminal illness to unfortunate accidents. We soon approached a large room, and then the nurse told us to wait, and I could see that my fiancé was becoming fidgety and impatient again. Yet, he still chose to wait, only trying to catch a glimpse through the threshold as the nurse entered and shut the door behind her. I clasp his hand and remind him that everything was going to be alright. Feeling his shakiness slowly subside, I looked up at him and gave him a beaming smile, trying to see if his panic would reduce, but he was lost in his own world of distress and concern. Seconds passed for me, but it must have felt like hours for my fiancé, until the door was reopened and the nurse came out saying that we had permission to come in and my fiancé absolutely darted inside. However, he was left in a state of shock at the sight of his mother, who was lying in the bed looking very sickly, as if the energy had been sapped right out of her. Tears flooded down my fiancé's face as he approached the ailing woman on the bed, arms outstretched as he tried to embrace her, and all I could do was watch and give them the space they needed. While they spoke to each other, a deep voice from behind me said, Appendicitis! I turned around to see a man in a cream white coat moving his chocolate brown hair out of his face with one hand and grasping a clipboard in the other. His chestnut eyes met mine through dark spectacles before he continued speaking as he said this. We believe that we may need to do surgery. An appendectomy is a viable solution to the ish. And we may need to do this operation immediately because, well, come sit here and we can all discuss what needs to be done. And so we all went over there to discuss the procedure that would take place and got told that while the operation would last roughly an hour, there would be a long recovery period afterward as it would be considered a major surgery and that it was advised that there was someone who could look after my mother-in-law until she made the full recovery. As the surgery was very urgent, we eventually had to say our goodbyes as she was taken away to the operating room, leaving me and my fiancé to simply return to the car where we could talk and process what the heck just happened. Following the discussion between me and my fiancé, we both came to the realization that Someone would need to look after my mother-in-law following the operation, and therefore, if we were to both attend my sister's wedding less than a week away, then arrangements would need to be made and my fiancé was an only child, meaning that there was no other siblings who could look after his mother. He tried really hard to find other relatives, but was not having much success in finding someone who would be able to travel a long distance to our place and then look after his mother. As we began to lose hope of finding someone, I resorted to my only best option, 
which would be to let my sister know that I simply could not make all of the weddings and may end up missing parts of them. Now, for reference, my younger sister was certainly a nice person who could be considerate at times, but I feared that something like this could really set her off, especially since this was her wedding day after all, and I knew that she had spent months meticulously planning all of this out with her partner. However, sometimes in life, there are unexpected circumstances, and some that are simply just unavoidable. Which left me thinking, do I prioritize looking after my mother-in-law and miss out on my sister's wedding? Or do I choose to attend the once-in-a-lifetime event instead? My mind was in a transient state, switching from both thoughts trying to also gauge how my sister may react. Perhaps she would have a childish outburst or about how right I was. I remember calling her and picking up mid-conversation from the contents of the conversation on the other side. I realized that she was likely talking to a wedding planner. Hey sis, I'm a little busy at the moment. What did you need? Typical of her to skip asking how I was. Um, I just need to tell you that I may not be able to attend a part of your wedding. Then there was this awkward silence and the sound of her moving around on the other side stopped. It was as if the world had frozen. Or as if I wasn't even talking to anybody. The radio silence sent chills down my spine and how was she going to react? I took a deep breath to prepare for the worst, but my sister had other plans. So, why might that be? She asked coolly with her quiet tone masquerading hints of, well, disappointment. And I could only think that she was preparing for an outburst and this was only to spark. Which would then set off the dynamite leading to an explosion of rage. Well, you see... John's mother has been really sick, and she's in the hospital at the moment. I said, giving a slight pause to see if this statement could somehow change anything, how wrong could I ever be? And? Well, well, um, I believe that someone will need to look after her when she gets discharged. I gave another pause, then she interjected. Well, I hope she gets well soon, but how does that stop you from coming to my wedding? Something about this triggered a sort of, I don't know, exasperation in me. How could she not piece it together? Was it really that hard for her? Why was she trying to get the words out of my mouth that she was wanting to hear? Was she trying to make me feel guilty? You see, sis, I feel that I may have to stay at home for a while just to look after her. Make sure she's all right before I can go. I really, really don't want to miss the wedding, but looks like I'll be missing parts of it because of these unexpected circumstances. Why couldn't you just find someone to look after her, though? Oh, oh so now she had reached that stage, where she would keep asking questions as usual, trying to get words out of my mouth that would make me seem unreasonable, and therefore betray her as the innocent one, just like she did when we were kids. Well, I was not going to let this slide. I say, well, it's not easy to find someone to look after her, I answered with a hint of annoyance. I mean, John's an only child and his closest relatives live so, so far away. It's not possible for them to drop everything just to come for a day at such short notice. We've already tried searching, if that makes you feel better. Well, work something out then. Oh, I mean, come on. This is literally a once-in-a-lifetime moment that you're going to throw away because you can't organize yourself to find a single person that can look after somebody else for a few hours. I mean, don't you have neighbors or something? You don't have any family friends that could take out a few hours of their day for this one day? But it's not that simple, is it, Jane? I retorted. In fact, you know that it isn't, so calm down and actually try to understand and respect the situation. It's already a really, really tough time, not just for me, but also for my fiancé. I could really appreciate some consideration. Consideration? 
Well, I would think that you would consider me at least, seeing as I'm literally your little sister. I'm just being brutally honest. Maybe you should really recognize that and stop being so self-centered. Oh, oh yeah? Well, that's rich coming from you. And from there, I was a descent into one of those sisterly arguments back and forth, which never ended well. With both of us just getting mad at each other and hurling whatever came into our minds, not really even considering what we were saying. Eventually, we ended with bitter farewells. Both of us close to tears, and I was livid that my own blood could be so inconsiderate, especially of their own sister. So, what do you think? Am I really being unreasonable for supporting my fiancé in these unexpected circumstances? Am I the a-hole for skipping my sister's wedding because of this troubling situation? Personally, I felt that I was innocent and she's the one who needs to be more thoughtful. I mean, she's about to get a husband of her own. So, she had better be prepared for this lifestyle. Update number one. So, Here's a quick update after my sister's childish reaction to me and my fiancé being unable to go to the reception, or at least missing a part of it. I would have thought that her unjust fire of rage would have slowly diminished, yet now I could argue that it had grown into a fierce inferno, as I had called her a few times to no avail, only to receive a few rather curt messages later, most of these being like, I'm too busy, stop calling me, you can't make this right. But that was not the cherry on top to this rather spicy burnt cake. It was that she's now demanding. Perhaps the steam had cooled off a little, but now she was asking for guess how much money. One thousand? No. Two thousand? No. Five thousand dollars. Was she out of her mind? What was she thinking? Previously, I would have been more than happy to give a thousand, heck, ten thousand dollars in gifts. After all, it was my little sister and her wedding. She was really going to need the money. Yet now my mind had completely changed and what may have consisted of browsing for the best gift for her days ago had now become a complete disinterest. I was only looking for something that could pass off as reasonable for a wedding gift not too expensive at all. Maybe a cheap cutlery set. You know, one of those cheap ones that look fancy, but when you get them, <laughs> they're not even sharp, and they're like the reduced section at Target and Walmart. Now, I was feeling my blood begin to boil. The audacity. Before I could erupt like a volcano... My fiancé must have noticed my face turning red in rage, for he asked me, What's up, Jules? It's my sister, John. You know, what she's asking for. You're not going to believe this. Five thousand dollars. For a split second, disbelief spread across my fiancé's face, but he tried to conceal his shock by asking, What do you want to do then, hon? I suggest you take a seat. Let me get you a glass of water in the meantime. As I walked back to the sofa, the same one I would browse wedding pictures on, I grabbed a blanket and wrapped myself up like I was in a cocoon, a pig in the blanket. My eyes watering, my own sister for heaven's sake. How could she do this to me? I was thinking about getting our parents involved, but we weren't little kids anymore. So that idea was hastily thrown out the window. What could I do? The teardrop slowly slid down my face, but soon tears of resentment started pouring down. What could I do? What would I do? What should I do? My mind was hazy with a bleak mixture of melancholy and irritation, yet soon something came to light. I realized that that was what I needed to do. I had to disobey my sister. As my fiancé re-entered the room, I looked at him, trying to hide my teary eyes, and accepted the glass of water with a light smile, taking a slow yet steady sip, before opening my mouth to say, We're not going to give her a gift. <laughs> yet again, my fiancé had a shocked expression, which he only tried to conceal, and he simply replied, Oh yeah, really? Yes, John. I believe that she does not deserve it.
Uh, but are you sure you won't regret it later? Oh, how sweet he was. That was the thing about him. He was too nice sometimes. Unlike my sister, who really knew how to be spoiled, audacious brat. My fiancé was always trying to keep everybody happy and at peace. Even if it meant making sacrifices for himself. After all, he knew that he would need to chip in a little for gifts worth such a hefty amount. John, hun, I know you might be thinking certain things, but I really think that it's the best course of action. After all, if we give her gifts, she won't accept that she's in the wrong. Sometimes you really just have to put these people in their place. And with that, I finished my water and my fiancé could only give a brief nod of acceptance. He knew that there was no point arguing and took the glass from me and went back to the kitchen. Meanwhile, I pulled out my phone and sent my sister that final powerful message. Let's see what she thinks of that. Surely that would be the best option. Don't you agree? Update number two. I ended the last update by sending my sister a message, saying that I would not submit to her commands and give her the 5000 thinking that would be the solution to the problem that she created. Well, guess what? I was wrong. My phone starts to flood with angry texts and messages, along with a barrage of insistent phone calls, all from my sister. To summarize... Most of the comments were like, how dare you, you had better be joking, you are unforgivable, along with the occasional harsh words and more frequent than usual profanity. What had gotten into my sister? Was her new husband behind this? I've never really liked him because he did not act friendly towards me, but he did have the charisma well, and charm that somehow entranced my parents who were there on board with the idea of two becoming a married couple. Now, here he was, becoming a part of the family despite his wife trying to push her own sister, her own blood, away through thoughtless, unbelievable demands. It's rather hastily reaching a point where it felt like I was being harassed by these messages, like they were ferocious packs of wolves chasing me down as their prey, relentlessly hunting. It was the beginning of the difficult focus on anything without hearing the ping from a new message or the ringing of my phone. Even though when they weren't these noises, the contents of the messages were living rent-free in my mind, tormenting me. Calling my parents about it was becoming an even more approachable idea. But then there was that same old thought that we weren't kids anymore, which also made me realize something. We were not kids anymore, for heaven's sake. Arguing over something like gift seemed really petty and downright stupid. Yet here we were, bickering and fighting as toddlers did over toys. Eventually, I settled for muting my phone or just leaving it to do not disturb mode, as the messages began to be too much. But when I realized that this was only delaying the problem and that I could not simply keep running away, I had to face this head on. When I let my mind cool off a little and mentally prepared myself, meditation, deep breath, face mask, all that jazz, I made the phone call and almost immediately my sister answered, skipping all the formalities and going straight to the question of, what about the gift and have you changed your mind? I somehow managed to keep my calm and shift the conversation to basic formalities, but of course I had absolutely no success. By the end of the call, I was a teary mess. The call consisted of, but was not limited to, firing insults at each other. Her saying how terrible of a sister I was, me saying she was being unbelievable, her saying that the demand for the gifts was not unreasonable, and so on and so forth, until both of us were broken down into tears. Fortunately, my fiancé arrived a little while later just to give me a cuddle and make me something to eat. All of this was enough affection to reduce the pain of my sister's sting. She was such a wasp. Well... I planned to skip the wedding as a whole, but it was my fiancé who convinced me that this may not be the best course of action. He seemed really optimistic and suggested that I would have some regrets if I do not go 
to this once-in-a-lifetime event. He mentioned how he could easily look after his mother if we could not find anyone to look after her, and that I could go to the wedding also. He also stated how my parents would probably love to see me and would really miss me if I did not attend. And that was enough to break the ice and convince me to go. Oh, how sweet, warm, and thoughtful my Johnny was. No wonder my parents love him like their own son. Update number three, after the wedding. Hey guys, it's been some time, so I really did go to the wedding. Having picked a simple baby blue dress to wear, then I saw my sister with her hair and eyes similar to mine, but with a long white dress decorated with flower designs and embroideries. I couldn't help it, but I had to admit that she did look stunning, and she and her husband looked like such a great duo together. Everyone was flashing photos at them, with the photographer taking pictures from different angles, and the wedding planners running around like headless chicken making sure everything was perfect. The colorful bunting, the floral arc, the blooming flowers, everything had to be pitch perfect. I had to admit, they went all out for this wedding and must have shelved out a fortune to make it happen. No wonder they were asking for so many in gifts. I first went up to my parents who seemed a little surprised to see me, but nonetheless, they were joyful. So you made it. That's really great, said my dad. I'm so happy to see you, Julia, my mom added. I've been hearing rumors that you would not be able to make it to your sister's wedding. Glad to see you, though. I took a minute to process this, and my parents had not called me about this, and simply just listened to my sister, who had run her mouth and tried to get me out of the picture, both figuratively and literally. Oh, if only they knew what she had said. But I kept my cool and simply replied, Well, it's great to see the both of you after a while. When was it? Was it Christmas when we last all got together? Ah, oh, yes. Must have been. Because that rather dashing fiancé of yours was also there, said Mother. Where would he be now? Oh, you see, his mother isn't very well, so we had to stay at home to look after her. Oh, that sounds dreadful. Well, we wish her a speedy recovery and hope that the both of them can meet the new couple at the next family event, said my father. And as he finished speaking, an announcement on the speaker encouraged everyone to go to their seat in preparation for the service. I chose to sit next to my parents and Nana, who was always super cheery and delighted to see me, and watch the usual events of a wedding unfold. And while whilst mom and dad did get a little teary-eyed, I could not help but struggle to form a new few tears. After all, it was my little sister getting married. So, I did feel a little emotional, but in the back of my mind, her actions over the past few days had really caused me to hit a roadblock when it came to feeling any deeper, stronger emotions for her, besides irritation and perhaps dismay at how she could betray me and hurt me like this. Throughout the wedding... I thought that perhaps I would get an opportunity to confront her, or at least wish her the best in hopes of fixing relations, but she would always seem to glare at me or use her fiancé as an escape route, so that she would not have to speak to me, and throughout the entire event it went this way. When I realized the futility of trying to be discreet, I eventually broke down, and simply just stormed up to her and challenged her wanting to find out what she really thought after all her terrible actions. This broke down into an argument, and eventually my sister's husband managed to get her to move away from the crowd that consisted of lurking eyes and curious ears. With me following on, determined to sort the issue out right here and there. But this was to no avail, with my sister claiming that I was only here to ruin her wedding. And in a fit of rage... We exchanged some rather heated words amongst each other before I stormed off and hopped into my car. Well, at that point, I started speeding away, exiting the sisterhood that we once had. Sure, this may not have been ideal, 
But could you really blame me for the misery I was feeling? I mean, come on. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. There's one final update to go, update number four, and this is a wild ride. Let's go ahead and see how all this ended after the wedding fiasco. So, I thought I would give a really quick update on the situation at the moment. The family's in a bit of disarray now, with my parents trying to help me and my sister reconcile and come to an agreement. They really just want us to make amends. Yet my sister is being so stubborn. We both had a few rather aggressive phone calls that may have led to a few too many harsh words. Well, even when I thought I had found hope during one call to make amends, she would bring something up that would simply kindle another fury argument. This went on for a few days after the wedding, and to make matters worse, I believe that her new husband has been taking her side, really trying to fuel her rage with kerosene. That wolf in sheepskin. I've never liked him in the first place. He seemed really keen on the idea of marrying her, but had never really shown an interest in being a part of the family. He would always ignore me in a way just to despite me being the older sister. Anyways, now it seems like they've cut me off completely. They must have blocked my number and even all my social media accounts. Well, how could they? But I suppose that I can be like this and that's how life is sometimes. And while it breaks my heart that my own sister, my own flesh and blood and bone could do something like this to me. I really hope that you can see that I was not in the wrong and I genuinely tried my best in this situation. Well, despite all the ups and downs the past few days, I guess deep down I wish the best for my sister and hope that she has a lovely married life and wonderful honeymoon. After all, we ended up growing up together, right? And she is my blood, and once upon a time, my closest friend. Perhaps I could take away from this fact that the argument like this can happen, and sometimes it's necessary to stand up for yourself because if I didn't do it this time, then maybe I would have let my sister and her husband walk right over me. Let them think that they could just follow their whims and desires without considering my life and circumstances. Either way, I still have my fiancé, my sweet, loving Johnny, who has been supporting me throughout these difficult times, being a shoulder to cry on, a rock, a crutch to support me, an ear ready to listen to whatever poured out of my mouth, and after all, I did still have my parents that were always there for me and it was looking like my mother-in-law was going to make a successful recovery and soon be as fit and healthy as before. Things were looking bright. I suppose it would only take time for things to heal. Maybe my sister and I could once again be the closest friends that we used to be. I'm just glad at the end of the story, Jules was finding comfort with her husband who was there with her all the way throughout the story. Guys, let me know, do you think there could have been a different route where maybe Jules does get back with her sister and their friends again? Let me know your thoughts, drop your opinions down below in the comment section. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, just know, I read stories every single day. Some of the most dramatic stories I can possibly find. Most of the people that watch the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So just take a second right now, look down, see if you're subscribed. If you're not, click that button. Guys, have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one.